Hello and welcome to this video on Hindley Milner Algorithm W. If you haven't seen the intro to this mini series, I recommend you go and watch that, but otherwise we're going to jump in and look at the algorithm. So what is this definition telling us? There's a few things that we see. Initially at the top, we see this W uh, colon type env to expert to subst times type. And what this is saying is that we have an algorithm, algorithm W, which is our type inference algorithm. The inputs, uh, like each time we call this, we pass in a tuple of a typing environment, which is like a context and an expression. So this might be our Lambda expression. So we pass in these two things as arguments, and then it returns uh, a, a tuple of a substitution. So this is like a substitution uh, from type variable uh, to type, um, and then also a type. So specifically, this is basically our, our method signature or function signature for this algorithm W. Um, and it kind of makes sense what we'd expect. We pass in a context and an expression, um, and then we get back some type for that expression. Um, the substitution back might not be obvious at first glance, but this is actually needed so we can combine substitutions across different types uh, when we need to do that. So we're kind of gathering those constraints within a substitution when we make recursive calls uh, down below. So we have a few different kind of versions of this. So you can see we've got four different things. And actually, these four different versions are for our four different expressions. So this is effectively doing pattern matching. So we say, well, if we're calling algorithm W, um, and we've got a context, so the context is always the same. We've got some, some context capital gamma. If we're calling it with a variable expression, then we do this thing. If we call it with a function abstraction expression, then we do this thing. Uh, a function application expression, we do this thing. And a let statement, then we do this thing. So let's have a look at these cases. We'll start with uh, the variable expression first, given that's the simplest one. It's the only one to fit in one line. And what it's saying is, well, if you want to call algorithm W and you have a context and some variable expression X, well, then you need to return this thing. So it's saying, you know, calling this thing then is equal to, or like, kind of you get the result back, um, this thing. And this is our, our substitution and type. It's a tuple. So the first thing is our substitution. And our substitution, we're just saying is ID. Um, and that's like the identity substitution, so or like the empty substitution. And then next, we're also getting a type back. So this type, it's a little complicated. We haven't seen something quite like it before. But we've got a tau here, right? So tau, some type tau. And we're also replacing all our uh, alphas. So we have some vectors of alphas. So these are our type variables that it's quantified by. And we're replacing them with a vector of betas. And so then we have a where clause, which basically explains what these things that we're returning are. So our context, when we take x out of our context, so we look up x in our context, provided x is there, we should get some monotype that might be prefixed by a number of type variables. So there's some polytype uh, with monotype and variables. And these variables, for each kind of variable we've got there, we create a new uh, type variable. So really it's saying take a, take, take a new vector of uh, betas. So for example, let's say this type that we got out of our context was uh, for all A, for all B, A to B, right? Then this new beta means we have to replace all those things uh, with new type variables that we haven't seen before. So let's say we have some type variables like T0 and T1, and nowhere else have we used T0 and T1, then that, that's basically what our new thing means. So then we can say, well, this type where we replaced all these uh, alphas that were in front of the type with betas might look like... Um, t0 to t1. I should have specified earlier, but this syntax here with the kind of curly brackets and this slash is, uh, this is some substitution. We're saying we're substituting all the alphas with uh, betas. And then we're going to apply that to, to tau. And so that's what we return. We return the empty substitution and uh, tau effectively instantiated, right? Where we're replacing all the for all alphas in front of it with these new type variables that we're going to call beta, uh, which might be t0, t1, etc. Okay, let's go on to our function abstraction. So this is where we're creating a new function, or we're defining a new function, where we're saying our new function uh, takes in 1x and then returns this expression e. So let's look at that. Well, this is actually uh, two lines. We're actually basically going to use our let binding syntax uh, within our rule. Um, so this isn't the let binding syntax that we've been using in our Lambda calculus. There's some extensions. So for example, in this one, you can actually see there's multiple uh, definitions, and we've also got like things like defining tuples like this. But you can think of it similarly in that we're going to define this thing and then we're going to use the results of this in here. So you can see we're defining S1 and Tau1 in here and then we actually use Tau1 and then S1 in our second line. So what are we setting with this let in binding? 
where we're saying that S1, which is probably a substitution one, and tau1, which is probably a monotype one, is going to be equal to the result of calling, uh, so it's like a, a, a subcaller or a cursive call uh, to algorithm W, where we have the same context as we had before, plus an additional assignment where we say we're going to assign X this type beta. And we're going to say, again, as we had this kind of new type variable here, we have a new type variable beta here. So this might be you know, T2, for example, as long as we haven't used T2 anywhere else. So we say X has type T2 plus the existing context. And then we're going to figure out the value of the expression E, which is, remember was our body of the function. So again, this actually looks pretty similar to our typing rule for function abstraction, where we're taking the context, we're adding this extra assignment, and then we're inferring this uh, expression E, right? And we get back our substitution S1 and tau1. And so then the return of this is S1, so the same substitution. And then S1 applied to beta uh, goes to tau1. And why might we get this type? Well, it's a function, right? Because we've defined a function, so we should expect a function type. And the return type should be, it's returning this expression E. So the return type should be this tau1, which is the type of uh, the expression E that we found out. And the argument it takes should be this beta, because remember we created this new beta and we said that x, our kind of input parameter, is going to have this type beta. So we have the beta. And using the uh, S1, the substitution 1 here, and applying it to the beta is going to be any kind of constraints that we've picked up by applying algorithm w to this are going to then be applied on that beta. So for example, if our function, when we infer it, it tells us, well, then the input type beta should have to you know, unify with uh, an integer. Well, then that means it should be an integer. And so we're going to apply that and get an integer back. Next rule, we have function application. Uh, so this is where we have two expressions. We've got e1 and e2. And first, we look at e1. Uh, so we call algorithm w. Uh, we say, with that same context, how's e1 doing? We get the results there. We do the same thing for e2 and get the results there. You'll notice we actually pass in substitution 1 and apply that to the context first. This is so if there are any constraints in e1 that we just learned about by running algorithm w on it, we are kind of aware of them when we're running e2. So if there's something that conflicts within e2, um, we'll actually throw an error here um, by knowing that, hey, something's not quite right because we you know, we updated our context when we applied this uh, S1 and we learned something from inferring E1. And now we can infer E2. And if there's a problem, we throw an error. Otherwise, we get back this new substitution. And so what do we do here? So now that we have the types of these two expressions, so we've got this tau1 and this tau2, right? We know the types of them, but we need to check, do these actually go together? And so that's where we need to unify with kind of our expected type and the actual type. So what we're going to do is that this weird swirly u here is our symbol for the unify function. So we looked at unifying in a previous video. You can go back and check that uh, if you are not familiar with it. What we're going to unify is this t1 type, which is going to be our e1, which is going to be our function. So we should expect the function type uh, should be something that takes a t2, right? Because our t2 is an argument. So we should, should say that this t1 should take a t2 and then return some beta. We don't know what that beta is, but we're going to say it needs to you know, take a t2 and return some beta. And as we have done before, we're going to create this new beta. So this is going to be a new type variable. So this might be you know, type variable t3, t4, anything that we haven't seen before. right? Um, so we have our function type should unify with the input type to something. Um, and we're going to unify those together. There. And then we get a new substitution out of that. So provided these unify, um, we get another substitution, which tells us what we need to apply to make sure they actually unify. And then our return type is we combine all these substitutions. So we have S3, S2, and S1, all three substitutions together. We want to combine all those constraints that we've just discovered. And then we're also going to return the return type of this thing, right? We said beta was the return type of our function. And this whole thing, once you apply a argument uh, in a function, you get back the return type. So we're expecting this beta as a return type. And we also need to you know, apply the unification constraint to that um, again, because we want to con combine those constraints and get back the actual return type. So lastly, we have the let in binding. Again, we're calling algorithm w, and we have context and the let statement. So we have let x equals e1 in e2. So we have some expression that we're setting x to, and then we're saying, well, we can use x within here, and it should have the value e1. So what have we done? Well, we've said uh, we need to figure out the type of e1 first. So we're going to call algorithm w on that e1, and we get some type tau1 for that e1. And next, we're going to use that type. Uh, so we know that x has this kind of type tau1. And we want to figure out the value of the body, E2. So we're going to ask uh, algorithm W to look at E2 again. Um, and in this case, we're going to say, well, we want the same context. But we also know now that X has this uh, type tau1. So you know, I'm jumping over a few things here. But we're going to imagine that we just say 
algorithm W, we're going to ask it for the context. And we also know that now X has type tau1 is also in our context because we've just defined it here. Um, and we're going to ask that and then say, what is the type of E2? And so what are these extra bits? Well, first off, we have to apply the substitution S1 to our context. In case we learn anything you know, extra from, from inferring this type uh, X, so maybe extra constraints with how we're using other things. So if we're using a, a thing in a certain way, like for example, we're calling odd on a uh, variable within that, we might end up with a constraint that, well, this variable has to be an integer because that's what I'm expecting. So that's kind of included on our substitution. So we apply that substitution to our context. That's that one. And we also ask uh, for this like clause function over the substitution S1 and our context. So apply the substitution S1 to our context, and we have that updated context. I'm going to ask clause on that context plus our tau1, which is computing our kind of uh, generalized version of tau1. So what in tau1 is not restricted anywhere else in our context, and therefore what can we kind of put for all uh, type quantifiers in front of? And that way we can have a very generalized type. So again, this used to be called a uh, generalize or gen in uh, the Damison uh, Milner paper, I believe. And that's what this function does. It's kind of our generalize uh, rule implemented there. So we're saying, well, we have our updated context and we have X having the kind of most generalized version of our type tau1 that we found. And then we're going to use that to infer E2. So that's why let bindings are related to generalization. And then finally, we're going to do the same thing where we're combining these other constraints that we've learned about uh, through combining our substitutions and then returning tau2, which is our return type of this E2, which is the main thing in our lap binding. So that's been quite a hand wavy rushed run through of algorithm W. Hopefully it's been helpful in understanding what all these parts mean, what the syntax is meaning, and will allow you to go and, and read it uh, yourself and maybe spend some time understanding it. In future videos, we're also going to look at algorithm M as well as actually implementing this in TypeScript. So if you're more familiar with maybe, you know, imperative languages or you just like TypeScript, then uh, look forward to that. And hopefully you can uh, maybe better understand when it's you know, fully defined and you can actually run it uh, and write tests for it, et cetera, on your own machine. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.